Uh, resource boxes allow for the bulk, loan and return of items. And I'm going to go through the setup of resource boxes today. Um, before you set up resource boxes though, everything that's going to be inside the resource box needs to be catalogued separately. So you can use Z cataloging to catalog those items individually and they need to have the barcodes attached as well. So essentially what we're going to be doing is, uh, is barcoding a container, which is the resource box itself. And all the contents are inside the, um, to be lent with a box are going to be uh, attached to it. So in Circulation Desk, when we loan out the box, all the items will be lent out automatically. Uh, during the returns process, um, when you return a resource box, you'll ask the question, do you want to return them individually or in bulk? And I'll be showing you how that works. As well as that, resource boxes can be reported. Uh, you can run reports in resource boxes to report on their contents. Resource boxes uh, don't show any information in the search screens or orbit screens. So if you look up an item that is part of resource box, the search screen currently doesn't say, oh, this item is part of resource box. Resource box is a circulation only function. Let's have a look at a resource box and set one up. I go to my management screen, I go to cataloging, look at that. Go to cataloging and I'll go to resources. So what I need to do is I need to add a catalog record or resource record which would represent the box. I've already catalogued the uh, contents of the box itself. Okay, and I'm going to set up a resource box on mini beasts. So I'll create, click the add button. I'll just use the book cataloging template because the bibliographic details of the box are basically the same as a book. Um, all I need is a title for this. So I'm going to call it the um, resource box. Now with resource boxes, they have two names. Uh, and the name is separated with a colon. So resource box itself is describing the, the fact that it's resource box. And the second part of the name, which we'll see in a moment, will describe what's inside the box. You can even number your box, you might call it resource box one, resource box two, resource box three if you wanted to, to make the naming really clear. What's make one called resource box one? And it depends how you label your boxes. Click on add. Now for resource boxes, I'm going to manually add them because it's a local setup, the containers, so manually add new resource. And I'm not going to add many details for my resource box because it really is just a circulation function. It's not something people are searching for. It's a, it's a circulation function. So let's call it resource box one and click save. Now, at this stage, you do not need to attach a barcode. You don't need to click add copy. Instead, to turn my resource box one title into a resource box container, I click the add resource box button in the top right hand corner. This is what's going to change my resource into being a resource box. So click add resource box, top right hand corner, then give the resource box a name. In this case, it's going to be mini beasts. It might be resource box one, year three gold mining resources or something like that. Remember, resource boxes are uh, groups of similar resources that are related to a topic or maybe a group of um, resources such as a set of dictionaries or atlases or something like that. Leave the type as permanent. Leave the resource box branch as library. And then attach a barcode to your resource box. This is a school barcode. This is the barcode you'll scan to loan or return the box. Scan a barcode in. Then you're prompted to enter the barcodes of the items inside the box. These are barcodes already added to the catalogue to the items that are going to be contained within the box. In this case, it's going to be my Mini Beasts um, titles. I've only got a small box, I've just got four items there. If you make a mistake, you can highlight the barcode that you don't want inside there and click the minus symbol. I'd suggest scanning barcodes in rather than typing them in because it's much more efficient and a lot less error prone. 
Once you've um, scanned in the, the items that are going to be inside the box, click the plus symbol in the top left hand corner of the screen. That's going to create the resource box. Once that's been selected, you get a confirmation screen and it shows you the items that are going to be added to the box. And they've got tick boxes next to them. They can see if you did make a mistake, you could always untick any that you accidentally scanned in. Once you're satisfied that everything that you've scanned in is ticked correctly, click the Add button in the right hand side of the screen. When you select Add, you now have a resource box. The title of the resource box is Resource Box 1, as seen at the top of the screen. The resource box name itself is Mini Beast, as displayed at the top of the screen as well. And if you look towards the bottom of the screen, you can see all the items that are inside the resource box. If you need to remove an item from a resource box, you can simply click the minus symbol on the right hand side next to the item that you no longer want in the resource box. That's the minus symbol, not the rubbish bin. The rubbish bin is a weed button, <laughs> delete button, so just the minus symbol. If you need to add extra items to your resource box, you can use the add copies function in the middle of the screen. So next to add copies, you can scan in any additional items you'd like to add to the resource box contents. These items need to be catalogued already. we click on that particular resource box, resource box 1, takes us to this screen. So there's the original title that we added, which is resource box 1. And underneath is link to resource box maintenance. So you can see um, the, the other items inside. Click to res resource box maintenance, and it takes you directly to those particular items. We're back to where we were a moment ago. If we click on the copy of the resource box, that's the, our box container, our box barcode. That shows us the copy details and there's some reports we can run there. So one of the reports we have in there is resource box details. And resource box details will show you what's inside the box. One of the nice features in Build 8 is the ability to see other, uh, what reports look like before running them. So in this example for the resource box details, you could actually see the example at the bottom of the screen. And when you click on it, you can see what the resource box will look like. Remember, the, 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 the image that's displayed there is just a sample. And I'll just run the report as necessary. If you'd like to see if all the, if you'd like to see a list of all the resource boxes that you've got from the cataloging menu, you can choose resource boxes. When you select resource boxes, it shows you any resource boxes you've got set up already. And to see the details of an individual box, you can click on the barcode or the number on the left hand side. Okay, so what happens when we loan this out? We need to go to Circulation Desk to see this. So we'll go to Circulation Desk at the top of the screen. That's the two arrows in the top right hand corner. That's Circulation Desk. And I'm going to bring up a teacher. And of course, Tamara's got some overdue loans. What a surprise. We'll let her have those loans. Click the green tick to continue. Now what I'm going to do is loan out the resource box to Tamara. So I'll scan in the barcode of the resource box. OK, loan limit exceeded. Allow loan. Resource box one will exceed the borrower's fiction resource box loan limit. OK, my lending rules, you need to also set up 
how many uh, resource boxes people are allowed to have. I've set my rules up. I'm going to override that and allow to have them anyway. And a message is displayed, process four items from the resource box. So it tells you straight away how many items were in the resource box and went to her. Looking at the loans at the bottom of the screen, the resource box one colon mini beasts. Notice it's got a, a double name now. It's got the, the resource box one name, which is the resource name, and mini beasts, which is the resource box name. So it's pretty important to make sure the names are meaningful. And as you can see, that's quite clear. It's number, box number one, and it's called mini beasts. And items that are inside a resource box have a little box icon next to them, so you can tell it's actually part of a resource box. That icon appears automatically. And once you finish with the borrower, let's click Finish. Let's go back to Tamara's name again. As you can see, resource box ones are loaned to her, as are the items inside the resource box. To return a resource box, the process is almost exactly the same as a normal return. Again, just click on return. You don't need to borrow on the screen to do returns. I just happen to have Tamara's details there still. So I'm on return, and I'll scan in the barcode of the box. And of course, Tamara hopefully has brought everything back. And the message is, return all copies. Do you want to automatically return all the items from the Mini Beast resource box? Now, if I answer yes, it assumes that everything's inside the box. Now, you might be able to do just a visual check. If there's only four items, one, two, three, four, they're all there. Happy days. Otherwise, I click the cross to say, no, don't automatically return everything. And it displays everything that should be in the resource box in a list with check boxes next to them. Now, what you could then do is either scan each barcode in individually. For example, if I scanned one of those items in, it automatically puts a tick next to the box. Alternatively, if, you, if you're not using the barcode scanner to check each item individually, you could just use the um, mouse to select the items to return. If you don't remember where you're up to, select deselect all and start again. If you choose select all, it ticks everything. Deselect all, unticks everything. Otherwise, scanning barcodes returns the items. In this case, I'll choose select all. I'll visually check them all or scan them all in, and I'll click done. You then ask another question. Remove all copies from the box. Are the copies from this box to be returned to the shelves now? In other words, do you want to disassemble the box? Now, if you finish with the box and it's never going to be put together again and it lent as a bulk loan, you'd answer yes. Otherwise, if you'd like to retain them being kept together as a group of similar resources, click the cross. The items are returned as a normal return. So it's pretty critical at the return stage that you read the question carefully. Very critical. It'd be not good. <laughs> If you accidentally said, I'll return them all, disassemble the box, oops, the box is disassembled. You then need to reassemble the box so you're going to resource box maintenance again. So read the message very carefully. First one, return them automatically. I would suggest say no. And do you want to remove the copies from the box? I'd say no, unless you are disassembling the box you're not using anymore. And when items are lent and returned, they're um, recorded against their loan history as well. So even though a 1001 bugs to spot was part of resource box, it still gets counted as being used. So in loan history reports, it's been used. Also, when you loan out a resource box, the items inside the resource box get treated as the same rule. So let's say Captain Fax, Creepy Crawly Adventure, and 1001 bugs, etc., were non-fiction items. Oh, one's fiction, one's non-fiction but Mini Beast was teacher reference, they'd be treated as teacher reference items. If somebody attempted to loan an item out of the resource box, a message is displayed as well. So I'll just click Finish for tomorrow. 
let's say Jody comes along and Jody somehow finds one of those mini beast type resources. Maybe she just takes out, maybe she goes along, takes out the box. Scan in the item. Allow separate item alone. This item is part of the mini beast resource box. At this stage, the circulation staff should say no. It's part of a box, you can't have it. Or it might say, well, actually, that unit's been covered already this year. Yes, you can loan it this time around. So we'll say, um, allow a separate loan, yes. And as it has a little icon next to it as well, so you know it's still part of a box, which is great. When you go to the returns process and return that same item, Beastly Bugs is part of the mini beasts. Do you want to flag the item as not being in its container? No, we'll just we'll say no, it's going to be put back in its container. So as not being in its container, no, I don't want to tag as not being. It's a bit of a double negative question, unfortunately, but read the question in quite carefully. No, I don't want to flag not being in its container. <laughs> so Beastly Bugs will still be part of that resource box. As with other parts of Circulation Desk, when you click on a title, it takes you to the details of that. If you click on the barcode, it takes you to the copy details of that. So if I was to click on um, barcode for Beastly Bugs, that would take me to that particular record. And it says it's in the resource box, Mini Beasts. I could click on Mini Beasts, and it takes me to the resource box. So there are links from circulation desk to cataloging to copies, etc. Also, um, when you're looking at resource boxes themselves, looking at the contents at the bottom of the screen, Captain Fax Creepy Crawly Adventure, I can click on that barcode, that would take me to the copy record as well. Remembering you've got a link back to the Mini Beast resource box as well, if necessary. And it has got the loan history as we as we mentioned. Okay, 